Vicky might wonder if perhaps casual water. Don't, apparently not. Apparently not. Well, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't think, casual yeah. water on the side of that hill. I just, uh, when you look like that, uh, if the grass is long, you're just trying to see if there's maybe a little rock or stick or something that, that uh, may be in the way. All this taking place at the club of which Bob Jones was a member. A club that's only had four professionals in its... Now back on the 16th tee. Eight, that miraculous two. It's one back. Only one behind now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, plenty of room to drive into, and it's right plumb in the middle. Well, Henry, let's take a look at 18 now. Butch Baird is just about ready to hit this thing, or to attempt to hit it. He's got all the green to work with, or quite a bit of it. But there's a bunker on the other side. Looks like a good shot. He's got to run a little bit more than that. Good shot, though. Well, he'll have that for a part. Now then, the leader, 16th tee again. Hey, 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 hey. That looked to me to the left. That's a dangerous one by my happy there. About level, they are, but uh, it's a dangerous one in that short breath. Come on, Johnny. Okay, a look at the crowd at 18. It continues to build. Stay with us. The finish is coming. We're running out of holes at the U.S. Open for 1976, and still, it's all in doubt among Mahaffey, Pate, and Weisskopf. Mahaffey at 16, and Henry Longhurst. That Weisskopf. Up here on the green, I gave him 15 feet, but I think it went back a bit after that uphill green, and I think it wouldn't be fair to call it 20 feet. This for a birdie for Weisskopf. Mahaffey three under, Pate two under, Weisskopf one under. This to join Pate at two under. Oh, a little harder would have done it. Well, he stays one under in third position at the moment. And just the other two left behind him, waiting to play up the hill to the 16th group. <laughs> really has been a wonderful day's golf. And I think you'll agree, we've never seen a happier pairing than the two that we're waiting for, Mahaffey and Pate, just behind. A look at Butch Baird's putt that he needed here on 18 for a round of 67, tying the best round of the tournament. There have only been two 67s. The last one was on opening day by amateur Mike Reed. A great day for Butch Baird. He's tied for fourth right now with this man, Al Guyberger. Safely in for Guyberger on the 16th. And only one more pair to come up this hole. Mahaffey and Pate. And it will be Pate to play first. Right from the middle of the fairway. <coughs> a shot, a shot of perhaps 160 yards for bait, and right uphill with the flag very easily placed uh, towards the back centre of the green. He won't be able to see the bottom of it. Dead straight, but he could have done with at least one more club. Now then, do we know anything about Mahaffey's tee shot? 
Is Bob there, Bob Rothberg? Yes, Henry. I don't believe John can reach the green. He has not got a good lie. He's about 165 yards. Uh, Jerry was a little further than 160. He was about 180. John is really going to have to jump on this one to get it out of there. That's way short, Henry. Barely coming up the hill. Yes, yeah, well short. That's uh, 55, 60 yards short of the green and out of our vision over that ridge to the right of the bunker. Yes, the last gallery coming up. And, uh, well, it looks as if my happy's lead is just going to go. John Mahaffey, the leader, and now on the 17th tee, Al Guyberger playing with Weisskopf. This is a par three hole that looks so much like the 17th of Medina last year, doesn't it? It certainly does. The one thing here, Jim, is you have a lot more room. It's an unusual hole in a way. There's not a sand trap on this hole. Guyberger did a powerful shot there. Guyberger is at even par. Doesn't look like he can win, but he could sure get close. A couple well, of birdies. A little golf <laughs> to be played. <laughs> well, you know, sure, if he gets, if he birdies the last two, he's, he's in it question of that. Now Tom Weisskopf, who is two strokes behind the leader, one stroke behind Jerry Pate. Now look at the hole, 205 yards apart, three terraced tees, just like we had at Medina last year. This was the hole where Crenshaw went in the water, remember, where the lightning storm struck. Not going to be any of that this evening. The rains of earlier today have given way to sunshine. This should be the kind of shot Tom would like to have, really. Probably about a four iron for him there. Oh, nope. Nope. In the rough, not in not in the water. There. Uh, you saw the, the young man pointing there yes. to where the ball is. But uh, again, that's kind of tough stuff, isn't it? Well, it is to get up and down out of Bermuda Rough. And on the funny, on the two par threes where he could tee the ball up, he made his two worst shots. I remember, we, I said a while ago that last year was these last three holes or so where the, everybody began to shake. And look at the leader now. Now, here he is. We saw him in the rough in one, then uh, that was as far as he could get. He's got about 60 yards to go. Can't see the bottom of the flag. Very, very fine shot indeed. Very nearly struck the flag, and it's about five and a half feet past it. Magnificent shot. What a day this has been. Uh, it's a day I shall never forget. I've been watching golf for years, but I've really enjoyed it more than any I think I can remember for a long, long time. No wonder he gets a good cheer. Well, Henry, you've seen so many of the young ones come along and move through middle age and retire for the game. Is that part of it, to see these young players come up and take their shot? Well, it makes me feel young again, but I wouldn't like to have that putter, I say. <laughs> probably go off the green down into the bunker. But uh, now we've got Jay Pate, you see, uh, 20 to 25 yards, not feet, short, coming straight up the hill. So it's all wide open. Pate could easily take three punts and Mahaffey could hold his, or Pate could take two and Mahaffey miss. Speaking of young men, you know that the two low amateurs today were Mike Reed, who led the first day, and John Fort, who birdied the last hole today to tie for low amateur. And those scores may look a little high there, but this is a tough golf course, and I think it's uh, a feat for any player to play 72 holes in the U.S. Open. You start off with over 4,000 people trying to get in, and these were the 60-some-odd players that did finish the tournament, and that's uh, quite an achievement. Not a lot of people have been able to do that. Okay, Henry. Now back to this tense situation on the 16th green. The last pair, Pates played two. Mahaffey, one ahead, has played three. Fairly straight, but all uphill. And just up ahead, Weisskopf studying his shot. And Pate now standing over his, addressing it from a 
least 20 yards, perhaps 25, even though it may not look it. Sixteenth green, eight, one behind. Go on, come on. No, you see, the, the hill got it. It was a very long putt and very much uphill and is very short. Let's ask Bill Fleming, who's, I think, with the seventeenth, what's going on there. Well, as you can see, Sandy Tatum of the USGA is standing with Tom Weisskopf. Uh, the ball was down in a hole, and I don't know whether it was a, an animal hole or what, but Sandy has gone through his rule book. It's an embedded ball here. It is embedded. The ball has uh, legally been marked, and now there you can see Tom looking over the shoulder of Sandy Tatum, who will give him the ruling. So we'll stand by here to give you a report. Straight up the hill for Pate. About seven feet, perhaps eight. All that distance short with a very long path. Now they both hold these doubtful putts, one after the other. Can they go on? Punch and counterpunch. And now, the Haffey with a blow like that has got to hold this rather downhill to keep his lead. Good six feet, and of course, there's no hope of charging at it because it's down the slope. John Mahaffey. This to keep the lead. Oh, what a shame. Well, now we go back to Bill Fleming. I'm standing right next to Tom Weisskopf, so it's difficult to talk. All right, Bill, we'll pick it up up here. We're up on the 18th tower. We don't want to disturb him in any way. He did get a drop there. Uh, when he dropped it, it rolled back into the same hole, we are informed from the golf course, and he was given another drop, so he dropped it again. Well, the thing to do about that is to put your foot over the first embedded ball hole so it doesn't, it doesn't roll under your foot. Okay, I can tell you what happened there. He did not drop, but what they were trying to do was cover themselves on what would happen if he dropped it into the ball, into the hole, the second, uh, the uh, first time he dropped. So what, he just left it there? So what happened here, he was allowed to mark the ball and then drop. Now, the, now he's... Okay, Bill. All right, now let's watch what he's doing. A bionic hearing. Well, he does have bionic hearing, and uh, let's see if he has this one bionically wired. He wants to get it close enough. Mm. Mm. Come on. Mm. Get his run out of there. Still Good. coming. Good oh. shot. My goodness, it almost went in the hole. What a great shot. So Weisskopf looks like making par on 17 to keep him at minus one and one shot out of the lead. A single shot with 18 ahead of him. 
again we would repeat that the playoff will be tomorrow if there is one at 18 holes and we'll be on 4.30 Eastern time. Oh, the tension, the pressure. I can't remember, as Henry said, an open that was any more exciting than this one. It's just been marvelous. No, we haven't mentioned Guyberger yet. You know, if Guyberger makes this little birdie and could somehow, you don't know what can happen in 18. The player might make any sort of score there. And uh, we haven't mentioned him, and yet he might just sneak in here one shot back. We saw them start at the first hole, the last twosome, and carrying them all the way in. I think that's part of the reason you can feel the tension, the tension yourself more even than usual. Should break from right to left. Just a little outside the right edge. Al Guyberger. Made it. Yes. Made it. Yes. Guyberger goes to minus one. He's tied with Tom Weisskopf. A shot out of the lead. This is a man who had won the PGA Championship, then had an eight-year drought without winning a tournament, suddenly found his game, and has been playing far better than ever the last two years. Well, He's really on the right track, and we haven't even been noticing him very much today, and there he is now, just one shot back of the lead. Well, he's a quiet fella, but look at this one. How he is hanging on, having fought his bike back and into it. All right, he goes to 18, a shot out of the lead, as does his playing partner. Behind them, the two men that lead them, locked in first place. There it is, Mahaffey and Tate in first for how long? Weisskopf and Guyberger, one out. Butch Baird in the clubhouse with even par. Shot 67 today, did Baird. Here the gallery, it does sound like a fight crowd. Come on, Al, somebody just said. Well, the people around 18 here uh, evidently are Weisskopf fans because each time he made a birdie there during that streak, they would be cheering. Of course, they just want to see a good tournament too, I think, which they are seeing. Jerry Pate, at last tied for the lead. It took him all day to get there. You heard him say get down. It was a little long. Up on the back. I'm happy having made bogey must again be able to focus in on that concentration totally and put that behind them. Well, it may be a little help here because he could watch uh, Jerry's shot and be sure that he has the right club situation like this, Jim, you've got to go ahead and trust your swing. All the years of practice that you put together, you've now, this is the time to use that. Have confidence in your own swing. Seem to be well struck. Couldn't tell from the way right. Way right. Hey, the fate of his Mahaffey way on the right. Oh, what a long way he's going to have to go in two putts to get down and par. No question about birdie in uh, that situation. No, you just <laughs> take three there and go. Now, just ahead, remember we have Weisskopf and Guyberger at 18. Here's what that looks like. The 18th hole, a 460-yard par four, is a fine finishing hole. And a player that reaches here today with a four to win and makes four, he deserves to be the 1976 U.S. Open champion. It's a slight dog leg to the left. Your teeing area here. Try to drive down the left side to shorten up the hole just a little. But it brings this trap into play then. You're flirting with that. If you pulled it too much or hooked it too much, you can also go into the lake, which is a quick six. Drive into the rough. This Bermuda rough is very tough. You have to lay up short and then pitch on the green. But if you've hit a good drive down the left side, you have a long iron or medium iron, maybe some players may even hit a wood, into this green, which is guarded on the left by two traps, in front by the lake, to the right by the lake. It's an awfully hard golf hole and one that has just eaten the field alive this week. Okay, now here a look live at the hole. We're looking from behind the 18th green, the water stretching out in front. And they'll be coming out from the right of your screen there. Guyberger hitting first after the birdie. This is a must in the fairway because if you don't put it in the fairway, you cannot knock it across the lake in two. You're trying to hit a long drive and yet you've got to hit it straight at the same time. It's on the right side and into the rough. Allen's over to the right and that's he about is. 200 yards from there to carry it across this water and unless he's very fortunate with a good line, Jim, that's just about dead. Out of that wiry Bermuda grass rough. Let's see what Weisskopf can do. Guyberger having just gotten back into it now may have knocked himself out of it. 
Again, the standings. There they are. The U.S. Open in the Deep South for the first time in the history of the tournament in the home of Bobby Jones, playing at the club of which he was a member. All the tradition and things that go with the U.S. Open here. Everything it needs to make a tournament to remember. I think Tom's got a three wood here. If they just put that down a little, it doesn't look like a driver. Of course, he's so long. I hit it way to the right. Oh, the he's way to the edge. right, I think. Oh, my goodness. Well, he's in the trees. You know, he was there in the first round. Yep. Well, he might get a better break being in the middle of the trees because that's where the gallery has walked, and they have walked down quite a bit of the grass there. Bill Fleming will be going over to see what sort of lie he may have. Well, we're now turning around to see what, what lies ahead of him. He's down in those trees and back further than you, you are there. See, he's over in the trees. Question of, of line occurs also. Uh, Bill, are you out there far enough yet to see what the story is? Okay, well, uh, Jim, the situation is Weisskopf's wall is a cart path. Bill, would you start again? We can't hear you. Okay, well, the ball is right across the cart path, and it is in the trampled turf. Now, the question is, does he have a the sight? There is no way he could get the green from there, but I would imagine he will play a very cagey short shot, hoping to put that third approach very close to the pin. Okay, and how, have you seen the, the lie that Geiberger has? I see you walking up there right now. Okay, Bill Fleming, our man in motion, along with Bob Rosberg. Rosberg back with the two co-leaders. Uh, Bill, when you have a chance, uh, if Weisskopf does, in fact, have a good lie, uh, why wouldn't he be able to get to the green? Is there a uh, number of trees in his way or something? I mean, it, it's uh, time to take a chance at this point. Problem. The tree? That's right. Well, you know, the other day, it's interesting, he was just off that cart path in the sand, about two inches off the cart path, and he stood on the path in his cleats because he had a little bit of a line, and he hit one of the, one of the most wonderful fades I've ever seen and made the green. But, Bill, you think he's dead as far as the green is concerned here, huh? Well, if that's his ball, he, I think he is. No. Yeah. Is that, yeah, I guess that is he. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can see the tree there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they had to slice, not a fade. Right. You could handle that, Jim. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> yes, regularly. Now, John Mahaffey tied for the lead. At long last, his lead has disappeared. He held it all day long against the man with whom he's playing, Jerry Pate. Mahaffey on the tour five years. He's won a lot of money, made a great name for himself. But he's only won one tournament in 1973, the Sahara out in Vegas. It's a lot of break in his putt, and it's about 70 feet long. Boy, he's using up most of that 70 feet. Let's see. Oh, mm, too much. Too much. It. Much too much. Oh. oh. Well, if you're going to miss it, though, Jim, it's got to be on the low side. So you putt at it uphill. You don't want to leave yourself, uh, you know, let's say the same putt putting down that mm -hmm. hill. He's made them that long today. But he must make that or the U.S. Open could start going away from, of course, in front of him. The men who are pursuing him are both in trouble. This man with him is the most immediate problem. But Jerry's way up on the back of the screen, and this is no easy putt he has. Well, he's not on the green either, because he's yeah. leaving the uh, flag in. Certainly, this is a very fast putt down the hill, and uh, back see Blaskoff eight, yeah. at 18 there, I'm sure. Tom's got himself in a position where he's almost got to go for it. I, you know, who knows what will happen, whether the two youngsters behind him will bogey the last two holes or what. It's a big decision here for Tom to make. And in this corner, Jerry Pate. Very delicate. Look at the break and now Look at it go. to pick up speed. Well... <clears throat> In a minute, we could have a three, a four-way tie for the lead. It's, uh, it's, it's, I hope Butch Bear doesn't pack. He's not out of it yet, that as is, a matter of fact. That is so true. <laughs> All right, if someone will catch him in the parking lot, uh, he may be in a five-way tie in a moment. Oh. Okay, Bill Fleming, have another report. All right, Jim, I had to get to a spot where I could uh, make this transmitter work. The problem is that he has those pine trees not more than 20 feet in front of him, and he cannot get the ball up quickly enough. The only way he could possibly do it would be to hit a line drive. The thing, of course, that stops that from going to the green is the water. How's he, what's he lining up for, Dave? 
think he might be going for it? No, I don't, no. I don't think so. No, nope, just laying not. it out. Okay, playing well, that's it what he did. the intelligent way. And he's in very good position, <laughs> down by the water, to lob it over, and try to get it close to the flagstick. What do you see with the flagstick? Is it's in the left front, as the golfer looks at it, just over the water. Hmm. Behind him, he does not know that the co-leaders, one shot in front of him, both have extremely difficult putts for their pars. Nor does Guyberger know that. Remember, Weisskopf and Guyberger are tied, exactly even. Weisskopf. Here's my happy putt, Jim, right here. Mm -hmm. It's a must. Oh, I thought it was going to go. I thought it might catch that one. That's robbery there. You, you just. Your, your nerves have to be so jumpy and you have to be so nervous and yet you hit a smooth putt like that. High side, I don't think there is a pro or an amateur side. I hear that all the time. I mean, when you miss it, yeah. you miss it. You, I don't care what you do with it. Two bogeys in a row from a happy. Now, if Jerry Pate can make his putt, he will be the leader in the United States Open in his rookie year. Al Guyberger is far from a rookie. 38 years old. He's seen glory. He has seen a slump and then further glory. And with this shot, he is playing it also safe. He's on the right side of the fairway. So they have both laid up. We'll have to get close to make par. Now, this one to take the lead in the open. He's done it. He's done it. Jerry Bates, who started the day one under par is now two under par. One under for the day, the leader in the U.S. Open. He has taken the lead on the 71st hole, walking with Harry Easterly, president of the USGA, around the water. But one more water hole lies ahead, one more pond to cross. As I said in that hole model segment, Jim, if that man, Jerry Pate stands on the 18th tee, knowing he has four to make it, and he makes a four here at 18. He doggone sure deserves to be the U.S. Open champion. Boy, I'll tell you, there's a lot of tingling being felt on this tower. Dave, you felt this so many times, and felt the gentleman on my other side here, Bob Benning, the professional at the Congressional Country Club in Washington, who's doing our scoring again this time. I know he's felt it. He's going to be the host pro for the PGA, so he's quivered about that already. But here is the U.S. Open. Right. National Championship. And Tom knows because they just put the score up on the big scoreboard here at 18. So he knows that Pate is leading at two under par. So he cannot afford to make a five here. He's got to make a four to have any sort of good chance. It's a great shot. It's a, a great shot. shot. Golly. Huh? Oh, nobody's giving this one away. I'll tell you that. The more I sit up here, Jim, the more I see the guys playing, the more you appreciate how well they play and under pressure because it's, just, it's amazing to me. Of course, you see some of the worst shots, too, but you generally coming down the stretch, you see these players like Weisskopf has hit so many great shots today. Guy Berger, who's kind of been laying in the weeds and all of a sudden has a chance. And, and I, I feel for John Mahaffey with the two bogeys, but... Uh, you know, someone has to win and someone has to lose, and there's <laughs> still a lot of golf here. That's right. And for the first time this year, huge grandstands have been built, as you see, and as they come to 18, they're coming into a bull ring in it's feeling. It's a many great people, arena for many golf. Many people as I've ever seen on, a, on one hole, Jim. There's 5,400 seats here at 18, and the gallery is 10 deep, it looks like, but Guy Berger shot with a wedge. Short, but just on the green. He flirted with the water. He's on the green, but that's going to be a long and very difficult putt. Weisskopf, on the other hand, is very makeable. Here's Pate on the tee. The same hole, remember, the 18th. He's got the lead in the open. They're moving to the right, and he's in the rough. He's in the rough. It's a longer shot than Guyberger's, but more in the position of Guyberger's than of Weisskopf's. Oh. He may be in a little bit, uh, where he went looked a little bit brown, Jim. And yes. if you see the brown spot there, you know that's not quite as lush. So he may have gotten a break. Jerry may have. Okay, John Mahaffey is down to his last chance now. He must feel that he's got to make... Bert, did you see the power he tried to put into that? I don't see him hit a ball any harder. Let's see where it goes. It also is right and in the rough. Why are they all going there, Dave? Could there be 
for some reason? Is there a tendency to do that? I think it's uh, three words. United States Open. Mm. You can't go to the left. If you miss, you had to try to go to the right, Jim. And the tremendous amount of pressure that is built up in trying to win this prize. And John, of course, took a very hard swing because he hasn't been driving the ball very hard. And it, for any player to swing more than they've got, you take the chance of being a little wilder. There's the former PGA champion, Al Berger, being applauded. Weisskopf has already received his tribute and is examining the line of his putt, having marked the ball. Look at the arena. And look at the standings. These are the things that you remember, Jim, when you finish playing. You remember the really a lot of the major championships and the things that go into them and the players and what they did and how they got there and the putts and shots and things they made are just uh, the things that really do stick with you. Can you imagine all the ironies and all the interesting things about this tournament if a young man born in Georgia would win it the first time the Open's ever been held in Georgia, the first time it's ever been held in the South? Uh, Bob Rossberg, I think this time has got a look at those two tee shots. Bob? Jim uh, Mahaffey has driven just off the fairway, about three feet. He's got the kind of a lie that I believe if he were not uh, one shot behind, he'd lay it up. I think he's going to take a shot at it, but he's going to have to hit it with a wood. He's got a tremendously difficult shot. Tate has, Tate has driven further out in the rough, and he's got a very odd lie. He's got a big clump of uh, grass behind the ball, but the ball is sitting pretty good. He's going to have to take the club up very abruptly and down very abruptly. And he's going to have to really rip it. And it's the kind of a shot, really, that you'd like to play, I think, rather than try to play a finesse shot into a green like this. What, he's going to have to hit it very hard. What, Dave. You, what club, Rossi? I'd say he'd probably hit a five iron, because uh, it's going to come out of there shooting. Okay. And uh, uh, if he, you know, he could take a four, Dave, to be a little safer. But he, I think he, if he hits it the way it looks, the ball is going to come out. I think he's going to put it in the back bunker. Okay. Here's the, here's the must putt for Guy Berger. Won't leave this short. Oh. Oh. Holy mackerel! The farthest golf I've ever seen under pressure. I have never seen so many people maintain total composure and show total courage to stay in the in the run, to stay in the fight. Lord, this is great, isn't it, Dave? That's a blow for peanut butter right there. Oh, I tell you, don't you know. You know it. Oh. He's at minus one. Good. Still a shot behind right. Jerry Pate, but Jerry Pate's in trouble. And how many times have we seen Weisskopf <laughs> with a putt to tie or a putt that he must make at the last hole, hit a wonderful putt and yet not have it go in? I think it's about time that he hit one and made it. That certainly is true. He's been second in the Masters. He's played so well in the Open four times, second in the Masters. He won the British Open. That's the only one of the big four majors. Now, there is Jerry Pate, the leader in the tournament. You saw the ball. It is a pretty good lie, as Bob said. Now, Weisskopf, with another, as Dave said, of the must-putts he's seen so many times in his career. It's about time the fates were good to him, Jim. He's done it. Two of them, one after the other. Tom Weisskopf. Shoots around at 68 in the final day. Al Tiberger got around at 69. Two marvelous rounds by these tall, distinguished men of God. And now they've done what they can do. Well, it's up to John Mahaffey, Jerry Pate. He's taking the wood. Well, he has to, Jim. He yep. can't. He, he can't do anything else. He's, his back's against the wall. It's, it's a shot. I'm sure, as Rossi said, he didn't want to take. But doggone it, you're not here very often. So let's have a go. He didn't get it all. Nope. Nope. I think it's water. There it goes. The U.S. Open gone for John Mahaffey. That is such a shame for that young man to play so well all week come down to the last three holes. Henry Longhurst said it first, I think, at another tournament. His hopes have gone to a watery grave. That is such a shame. Well, okay. Now, what of Jerry Pate? Well, he Two knows. men are in at minus one. He's at minus two. Excuse me, Dave. That's all right. I just, uh, 
getting a little emotional here, James. It <laughs> means so much to win this tournament. Well, Is it elected? Oh, what a marvelous, marvelous shot. Jerry Payne. If he makes it, he will win the Open. He will win the Open. Well, that, it, they had, that's the closest shot all day by anyone, whether they were 30 over or two over or any. That's how wonderful to win the Open with the greatest shot that we've seen in a long, long day. We've been on television. At age 22, a former U.S. amateur champion seems to be beginning the road that was tried by Jack Nicklaus. I'm not saying he will win what Jack Nicklaus has won, but he has taken the same road to this point. Winning the amateur, as Nicholas did, and now in his rookie year, as Nicholas did, winning the United States Open. He'll be the champion golfer of the United States. Unbelievable. I think he kind of had that feeling. He kept saying that at the age of 22, Jack had won three majors, and yep. he's won one, and, and this one would, would make him have two. Man, alive, he can start making up his speech now if he can add up his scorecard correctly. You know he's going to make that putt, huh? You well, know he's going to make that putt. Well, whether he does or not. It, uh, yeah, that's right, he's going to win anyway. And poor John Mahaffey now must play it out. Last year tied for the championship, only to lose in a playoff. He now lies three. This will be his fourth shot. So he can't win the Open. Well... The hardest thing now for John will be just to finish because it, he's fought so hard for 71 holes to have it go into the drink on him at the last hole. It's a long walk from there to the locker room, Jim. But he couldn't lay up and then no. watch Pate do what he did. No, no, no. Had to go. Well, he's going to finish like a champion, even though he won't be one. Every one of these four men gave it their finest shot. He'll win. I think that was an Alabama blanket <laughs> that was held up there. Jerry Pate went to the University of Alabama. Born in Georgia. Went to Alabama, lives in Florida. The first time the Open has been held in the South, he'll win it. What a fantastic shot that he played there. He's six feet tall, slender, weighs 165 pounds. His wife's name is Susie, but you could never guess how she spells it. Well. S, I bet you could. <laughs> you go right ahead, Jim. S O O Z I. And you spell his name P A T E. And now for John Mahaffey. Is that okay. a sportsman? Yeah. Would Bobby Jones be proud of him right now? You bet. He's got to be. Even though you were saying that, that Jerry Pate will be the champion, that young man is a champion right there, just by that little gesture alone. But. Both of them very much in the mold of Bobby Jones. Not their swing, their character. They're both quiet, but articulate and well-spoken, and ultimate sportsmen. Absolutely great tournament, great finish. I hope the kind of thing they've displayed here today in the way of character and courage and sportsmanship is catching. That's why they call it sport in the first place. This will be for a bogey five. If he makes it, he'll finish even par for the tournament. It'll drop him behind Weisskopf and Guyberger and into a tie with Butch Baird for fourth place. If he misses it, he'll drop another stroke further back. It can happen so quickly. Well, it sure happened to him very quickly. The drive at uh, 16, the blocked iron shot at 17, and then three putts following, and then the gamble he had to take at 18. Imagine that, unless he makes this putt, he suddenly will finish fifth. But closer than that, Jim, really. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And 
fantastic. Uh, great cut, John. You know he's got to be just dying inside. There's just no other way to put it. And now only one competitor left on the course. What a competitor. If he gets down in two, he wins. But one would be nicer. That would really be the frosting to birdie the last hole. Hmm. has won the Open with a round of 68. Three under the ball for the championship. Throwing the ball into the crowd. And now, at the moment, you think he would smile. I think he can hardly stop from crying. Well, it's a very emotional thing, and it's something that uh, many great players have never been able to do is win the U.S. Open, and he's done it so early. It, it's, it's doggone emotional, as a matter of fact. Oh. We're going to have to have a word with that young man no matter what time of the evening it is. We're going to come back here and meet the United States Open champion. We'll say it once more. Just before his death, Bobby Jones wrote a letter to the USGA and asked if the US Open might be played for the first time in the South at his old club, at the Atlanta Athletic Club. The wish was granted, and this year the tournament came here. And now it's been won by a young man born in the same state as this man. Jerry Pate, born in Macon, back home in Georgia, winning the Open. He's adding up his scores now, of course, and that must be done very carefully because every player in the game of golf is responsible for his scores when he signs the scorecard. He does not keep it himself, but he is responsible for it. The signing an improper scorecard once cost Roberto De Vicenzo the Masters Golf Tournament. It cost Jackie Pung the United States Women's Open one year, a long time ago. So you can't rush a man doing that. That's one you'll probably see in the papers tomorrow. <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. uh, or in Jerry Pate's den. Yeah. Bill Fleming is right down there uh, near the players. Oh, okay, Bill. Well, I don't have Jerry Pate as yet, the new U.S. Open champion, but I do have the one closest to him, Susie Pate. I don't know how you'd describe your feelings, but maybe you can make a short attempt. I just don't know how to describe me either. All I can say is it's just the greatest thing in the whole wide world. <laughs> Nothing could be better. My Jerry won the U.S. Open. Here he comes. I want to see the biggest kiss he's ever had in the life in his lifetime. Here he comes. <laughs> Fellas, can we just move back just a little bit so we can have a chance to see them, please? Jerry, just give us a quick word on your thoughts coming up to that final shot here to the 18th hole. Well, I had 190 yards, and uh, John and I couldn't decide whether it was four iron or five iron. And uh, I've been hit five iron. My caddy told me I had to hit five, and I hit it in there. Knocked it right in. You know, this hole on the second round was where a frog jumped on his ball, supposedly, and knocked it in the lake. I'm yeah. sure you had some misgivings coming to the 72nd and 18th hole. Well, I saw uh, Tom Weiskopf and Al Geiber, who are great players in the clutch, hit it right in there and made fours. And John Mahaffey, unfortunately, hit it in the water. I knew I couldn't lay up. I knew I had to make four. And just happened to hit the greatest shot I've hit all day. Well, you've won two major tournaments, and I don't know uh, how to express uh, the gratitude of the American public on the courageous finish you had here today, but I think in, in terms of, of how it was played, you have to feel sorry for John Mahaffey, who played with you. Well, John's certainly a great player. This is two years in a row now that he's been right there, but, uh, you know, I, I, it's a 72-hole tournament. I know yesterday uh, at the start, I was eight shots behind John after the first four holes. I was uh, four over yesterday after the first four, and I just... Kept telling myself to stick it out, you know, you, you still have plenty of holes left, you can still win. 
Okay. You're $42,000 richer, but oh, what a wonderful championship to have. Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks you. Thanks very much for joining us. <laughs> Susie and Jerry Pate. Okay, back to you, Jim. All right, Bill. Thanks very much. There's nothing else to say.